Welcome to Mount Bethel's Good Friday Service. On the behalf of our pastors, Bishop Dr. Cecil and Pastor Dolores Mullins, we thank you for joining us today. Now go with us as we journey through the last seven sayings of Jesus. God bless. Mm -hmm. It is well, it is 
Morning and blessings, everyone. It is a joy and a delight to be able to serving you through this medium. And I want to greet Bishop Mullings, Lady Mullings, and the ministry team at Mount Bethel. And those who are members and those who are watching us, we are continuing to be grateful for God's faithfulness. Because in spite of everything, He is a faithful God. Today is considered Good Friday. And many of us are reflecting on the cross. And as I woke up this morning, one of the things that came to me was that song that says, Thank you for the cross, Lord, bearing all my sin and shame. And we thank God for that old rugged cross. Many persons are reflecting on the last seven sayings of Jesus on the cross. And one of the things that we have heard or found out over time is that when someone passes or when someone dies or when someone goes, Whatever they have said last becomes very meaningful. And so as you have listened to six other speakers and they have mentioned things that were said or they have mentioned the last six saying, we are looking at the last, the very last saying, which is, Father, into thy hand I commend my spirit. And that is to be found in St. Luke chapter 23 and the verse 46. When it comes to the seven last word of Jesus, it must not be seen as a traditional topic, but it must be reflected as, or it must be embraced as a reflection of the passion, the ministry, the message, and the mandate of Jesus. Jesus came to fulfill a particular mission. And as we saw him on the cross, one of the things that we can say is that mission was accomplished. When we look at the sayings, if you, if you spend the time to review the sayings, you would have seen in these sayings forgiveness. You would have seen in these sayings reassurance. You would have seen in these sayings restoration. You would have seen in these sayings rejection. And also in these sayings, you would have seen completion. The task was finished. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. And so when we look at the last cry, I could not help but notice that the last cry had some similarity as the first cry. Because the first thing that Jesus said um, in, 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 in the first saying is, Father, and that is how he started the last one. And it's interesting that that happened because he actually started with the Father and he ended with the Father. And those of us who, who, who have grown up, well, everybody knows the Lord's Prayer. And in that prayer, we were taught to approach God as, our, as Father, our Father who art in heaven. And, and I, I thought about that that while Jesus was experiencing that kind of excruciating pain, he still recognized that even in a place of rejection and suffering, he still had that sense of belonging. And so there are just two things I want to point out to us. One of them is the fatherhood of God in suffering. I believe that the season that we are in, um, and times that we are presently in is speaking to suffering where some persons are concerned. And with what is happening around us, we have either lost someone or um, we know someone who has lost someone. And one of the questions becomes, where is God in all of this? But I want to say that even in Jesus' suffering, he demonstrated or expressed the father would have God. Here he was dying. Here he was losing his life blood. But he never lost his sense of belonging. And that is one of the things that I want to encourage the body of Christ as we reflect on the, the saying of, 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 of Jesus Christ. Do not lose your sense of belonging. You might be going through a difficult or a trying time. You might be going through a time of frustration and confusion and uncertainty. But God is there. I, I watched a program yesterday and a question was asked, where is God in all of this? And I love the answer because the answer came. He is right where he is when his son was dying. And so one of the things that we want to be mindful of as we go through this time is that just as our Jesus experienced the Father would have God in his suffering. You can also experience that with whatever challenge that you have. I also looked at it and one of the things that I saw, or the second thing that I saw, was faith in God in suffering. Jesus says, into your hands I 
commend or commit my spirit. And, and, and when I thought about that, it must have been that he saw the hand of God as a capable hand. He is the omnipotent one. So I am not giving myself into any other hand but your hand. And that is one of the things I want to point out to the body of Christ. The hand that, that Jesus committed himself to was a capable hand. And the very thing is your experience also. He is able to do exceedingly and abundantly, far above which we are able to ask or even think. But it's not just that he, he, he gave himself to the capable hand of the Father, but he gave himself to the caring hand of the Father. And even though at one stage it would appear that God rejected him, he was still in God's care. I want to say to the body of Christ that you also are in the caring hand of Jesus. Somebody of the Lord, somebody asked the question, does Jesus care? And that, that's everybody know I grew up on the old redemption songbook, 401 to be exact. Does Jesus care when my heart is pained too deeply for mirth or song as the burdens press and the cares distress and the way grows weary and long? And, and this song man didn't wait for anybody to answer the question, you know. He answered the question himself. He said, oh yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know my Savior care. So he released himself into the hands of the Father. It was not just a capable hand or a caring hand, but he's a, it's a covering hand. And, and, and if never a time in the history of humanity or in the history of the body of Christ that we seek for the covering of God it is now and in the psalm we are told that that he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall you trust so 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 we we, we Jesus released himself into the capable hands of his father he released himself into the caring hands of his father and now he's releasing himself into the covering hand of his father and and as we hear into thy hand i commend my spirit if you look at it from a human standpoint or from a fleshy standpoint it would appear that 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 Everything has come to an end, but I hear one songwriter saying, it's not over now. This is not the end. And so, into thy hands must not be received just as a closed case, but it must be received as a new chapter. Here we saw Jesus derobing himself um, of his flesh and uh, in terms of humanity and he was now going to be taking up a new assignment the position at the right hand of the the, the the father and we know that the right hand speaks to power you are a church that is exposed to the word the right hand of god speaks to power and he now takes up a new position as our intercessor between god and man so that church when he cried into thy hands i commit my spirit or i commend my spirit or i entrust my spirit what he's saying is that i'm giving up my responsibility here on earth um in it in terms of my, my 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 fleshy responsibility healing the sick and raising the dead but also he has taken up a new role as intercessor and i want the body of christ to know that in spite of what you are going through even now there is a god who said father into thy hand I commend my spirit and that was said for you and that was said for I and so church as we reflect on the sayings of Jesus Christ as we reflect on this last word I want to encourage every one of us to recognize the fatherhood of God you're not an orphan you're not rejected you're not without hope you're not without strength you are not without provision. You are not without protection. Because as Jesus released himself into the fatherhood of God, because he had that sense of belonging, you belong to somebody. And I also want to say that even in that situation, he had faith in the suffering. Absolutely nothing happens to you by chance. It is either allowed by God or it is ordained by him. And at the end of the day, it is to make you better and not bitter. And so, as Jesus released himself into the hands of the Father, we can rejoice in the reality that the work is finished, that the price is paid, and that he no longer has to suffer, and, and, and he's at the right hand of the Father, no making intercession for us. May the God of heaven bless you during this time. May the God of heaven 
cause you to feel that sense of belonging during this time. May the God of heaven cause you to understand that you're not suffering alone. You have someone who has gone through the things that you have gone through and he has given himself over into the hand of his father and you too have that blessed privilege to give yourselves over into the hand of your father. May the God of heaven bless you may we not lose sight of him in this time may we understand that we are loved we are appreciated we are cared for thank you for the cross lord thank you for bearing the sin and shame thank you for commending yourself to your father so that even now we have divine access through jesus christ god bless you mount bethel enjoy not just today but the rest of your life and may you be blessed hallelujah hallelujah thank you for the blood you shed for us lord jesus I hope that word ministered to you today. We invite you to be a part of our Mount Bethel family. You can find us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also go to your mobile device and find the Mount Bethel Church of God app there. Or follow us on our YouTube channel. You can find everything you need related to Mount Bethel on our website. My name is Bishop Gary Shaw Mullins, and on the behalf of our pastors, Bishop Dr. Cecil and Pastor Dolores Mullins, again, thank you, grace be with you, and peace be multiplied.